I had one for 15 years. I had, I had the eighth production A12. I went to my boss who was a two-star. I went to General Schwab. I was, at the time I was a tech sergeant. I said, General Schwab, I'd like to get a Blackbird for our museum. And he laughed at me. I said, General, give me the opportunity to fail. He said, all right, smarty pants, how are you gonna get it here? I said, I can't, I've already got that covered. He said, what do you mean? I said, so I got hold of the adjutant general of the state of New York. He said, General Weaver, and I was in the Air Guard at the time. In the Air Guard, you can violate the chain of command. If I was at Nellis, they would, I'd be strung up on a pole somewhere. But I called the, the adjutant general of the state of New York and I said, General Weaver, this is Sergeant Goodall with the 133rd. How would the New York Air Guard like to move the world's fastest airplane in a couple of your C-5s? It was dead silence for a few seconds. He said, do you mean the Blackbird? I said, yes, sir. He said, you call and we'll haul. And we're going we're gonna to classify it as uh, training for moving outsized cargo. Now, the, the, the funny thing about it is when Pratt & Whitney wanted to, wanted to lease a C-5, because they were trying to get one for, for West Palm Beach, the Air Force says, yeah, we'll lease one to you, but it's $967,000 a day plus gas. And I scrounged two C-5s for eight days each. And it was outside training, outsized training. I did, the, I did the entire move from Palmdale to Travis to Minnesota. Out of pocket was $25,000. When the Museum of Flight moved their uh, Lockheed Constellation from Toronto to Seattle, it cost them a million too. So I think I got a better deal. <laughs>